Gigi Loop is an interdisciplinary architectural studio based in Amsterdam, established in 2014 by Giacomo Garziano, and has been working on different scales of projects from product designs to large-scale urban planning projects. And since its founding, the studio has a premise of delivering eclectic approach that creates multi-sensory experiences and objects that become an organic extension of the users with vision focused on biophilic, regenerative, and environmentally conscious designs. So we thought it would be great to converse about building through being environmentally conscious with Giacomo himself today. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for the invite and uh, hello to everybody. Same here. So will you first tell us about your background and your studio? <clears throat> I started my studio, Gigi Loop, in 2014 after um, several years of experience in uh, other companies based in the Netherlands and, uh, and Italy. And in 2014 in Amsterdam, I started, um, I started my company with the idea to develop uh, designs and architectures that could be somehow more connected to the principles I was uh, already starting before uh, start, uh, opening my studio. That means the relation with space, between space and sound, the relation between uh, space, architecture and environment, environment at large. And then, um, so that's, that's 2014. And this last year, 2022, we started, uh, we opened a studio also in Milan, Italy. And I also, um, yeah, we are expanding through Europe still, not, uh, not outside of Europe yet, but even though our projects are now uh, developing also abroad, outside of Europe. So, um, and um, yeah, that's basically the background of the of the company. And um, yeah, my myself, I've been working, uh, as I said, internationally, but based in the Netherlands and Italy mostly. And um, and um, I've been studying music before, so that's that's a very integral part of my um, inspiration and design process in general. I always look at music, uh, look for references. Um, it's not only, uh, you know, inspirational, but uh, it's becoming very concrete and very scientific, the relation between, uh, you know, music architecture through mathematics, biology, um, quantum physics, and, uh, and so on. It's a pretty complex topic, but uh, we're getting there. <laughs> that sounds great. So now I'm super curious about how you, how would you describe your design approach and what inspired it? Maybe like how music can become also something that's environmentally driven? Yeah, I think the relation stands, um, stands in the, the idea that everything is vibrating as it happens in, in music and everything is connected. So I actually see, you know, our environment, you know, if you look at, the, the concept of nature. So we, we usually think that nature is, uh, you know, plants, vegetation, our environment, landscapes, animals integrated in the landscapes and so on. What actually nature means from Latin means uh, to be born. And from Greek, it means actually to, to live, to, to grow. So actually everything that is growing, everything that is created is somehow nature. So if you apply this concept to, you know, to your environment, you start expanding the idea of, of nature. Nature is also, you know, Saturn is also nature. The universe, in, in, in the totality of the universe is nature. So um, what we aim with our, um, with our design, with our architecture is to, to raise consciousness uh, about this topic and uh, the consequence of having larger perspective over, uh, over our environment actually makes you, um, let's say, um, it, it makes you uh, automatically more inclined to be respectful for your, you know, for your direct environment, be nature as we, we see today, nature, nature, well, our planet, 
but also you know at large thinking uh, you know with the um, with the James Webb uh, Space Telescope we are exploring uh, the space as we have never done before we see much further and much more um, crystal clear than we have ever done before we are becoming somehow an intergalactic uh, species so um, we have to start thinking that you know our base our planet is very important we have to treat it as a as our home we can't really only look at our you know living rooms and bedrooms our direct spaces we inhabit as our home our planet is currently our home and maybe in, you know in 2000 years uh, the solar system will be our our home hmm. i don't know if that answers <laughs> your okay. question but um, yeah we were you were mentioning biophilia actually this is the um, let's say the drive behind our um, the application of uh, the biophilic approach in our design and architecture because bio you know means nature and philia means love attraction affiliation to nature and living systems yeah. so it basically means to love everything <laughs> so we are actually sharing a, a very important message of uh, love trust to towards the environment towards people towards uh, the planet the universe and everything yeah it's all interconnected yeah exactly you know quantum physics is uh, now you know scientifically explaining how how we are all connected if you think about it Actually, 90 per, 99 percent of the atom is uh, is not really known. It's like empty space uh, for us. You start looking at ourselves, our tables, our cats, everything that that is around it, made out of just 0 0.0001 percent of matter, and it's all the same everywhere. If you look at the microscopic level, we are not different than the elements of uh, that we can find in space or uh, in nature it's hydrogen you know it's very basic elements the whole uh, the whole creation is made out of mm. yeah so we are we are actually really connected everything is connected yeah so on that regard what do we need to know about embracing organic architecture maybe as a response to the awareness of our consciousness towards the environment and how can it shape our further appreciation and harmony towards the built and the natural environment as well? Yeah, I think the key stands uh, in, the, um, in the idea, in the realization that, uh, that we have to start from our environment to build the places where we live, the places where we see exhibitions, the places where we worship our gods or anything that we create we have to start from nature we have to actually look at how nature will do these things for us so we uh, automatically do not impose ourselves over nature but we collaborate with nature i think there are very very nice examples of this in a very um, uh, if you yeah in, in a very raw uh, way in Indonesia there are um, there are bridges in India as well actually there are bridges built out of um, tree roots mm -hmm. and so while the tree the trees keep on growing they are actually serving people to cross uh, to cross the river so we are not actually cutting the trees in order to build a bridge but we are using nature. Uh, structurally, functionally, to serve our cause that in that specific case is to cross the bridge. But if you expand this, uh, this idea, then automatically our choices will be driven by, by this uh, respectfulness uh, towards, towards nature. Nature, as I described it before, not only plants and trees and, um, and, and animals, but everything. So, um, to go more in detail about your question, I think at the moment you apply this principle to your lifestyle, basically, 
then automatically you increase, you elevate your consciousness, your awareness of the built environment. Because, you know, the clients we have, they approach us because they want this specific approach from us. Hmm. So, um, and we see that this is happening more and more. We, our, you know, our uh, client's portfolio is, is expanding because, you know, this is what we're doing. And people are looking for this kind of, uh, you know, new relationship with nature. Or actually it's rediscovered relationship with nature because, you know, we, we come from there. We come from, we lost in the, you know, with the industrial um, revolution, we lost this deep connection that we had uh, with nature. Again, thinking about nature as we in, um, integrate it in nature. We are not distant from nature. We are actually really embedded in it. Okay. So the organic architecture comes, uh, you know, as a natural answer from, from the elements. So basically, you know, we use biomimicry principles in our in our designs exactly because we imagine what nature, how nature will solve this design uh, problem. So by looking at nature, we uh, we assume that this, you know, using also mathematical principles that nature itself uses to create, we create natural environments where you know, not only people, but, you know, environment and nature at large could coexist in, um, you know, a harmonious, as you mentioned, uh, and this is where um, probably music comes in. Um, that, yeah, this is, um, you know, the harmonious ecosystems we, we want to, to, to generate. And the regeneration aspect that you mentioned this is also embedded in biophilic approach because, you know, we always think in, well, when we talk about sustainability in the last years, we always think about minimizing the impacts of our built environment, of our actions in general. I think as a concept, especially proving that we are in a critical climate situation and evolution of the earth in, in general, we can't think about uh, minimizing the impacts anymore. We actually have to, you know, invert the, cur the curve. So we, everything that we do must have a positive impact on the, um, on the environment. We, for everything, for every action we take uh, during our day, we always should think, okay, is this beneficial for, for myself, for my peers, for uh, my family, for my environment and nature and space and <laughs> and everything that is contained in what I call nature. Will you share with us one project that will portray that? Yeah, we developed, um, we built this project here in Amsterdam called Freebooter. And that's, um, that's two families, uh, uh, two duplexes, um, apartment block here in Amsterdam. And that's, um, let's say, one of the... the Let's say what the starting point of our application of biophilic principles to our designs. Let's say our more conscious application of uh, the principles, because we we always had this approach, but you know over time we developed also a system to apply this um, yeah this approach to every scale of the design. You can think about biophilic approach uh, from you know from the in a graphic design scale, so 2D till uh, cityscape. So it's a very wide um, approach. So Freebooter, <clears throat> let's say, was, um, was a watershed for, um, for, for us in terms of, uh, you know, company evolution, because we, we, as I said, we apply these principles clearly and um, well, the outcome was, uh, was really impressive. The project was very well received by the media, by the, you know, we, we received several awards and uh, more than anything, um, the clients are super happy and they keep on, uh, you know, hosting journalists and, you know, students passing by or simply, you know, the neighbors. It became like um, a very important 
part of the city in that specific um, area of Amsterdam. So based on this idea, uh, on the principles that we applied with Freebooter, which is actually uh, also bio-based uh, materials uh, construction, that means it's a CLT, and see it's timber basically, and timber is uh, one of the few uh, construction materials that actually sequesters CO2. So um, in that terms, you know, what I was describing before, uh, not about min minimizing the impacts, but actually creating, regenerating an area by, you know, having, um, having a positive uh, ecological uh, footprint, we applied all these principles uh, in, um, in the modular and parametric system that is called mitosis. Mitosis is a process in the biology, is a process that happens when uh, a cell is splitting. So there is a specific, specific part that is called mitosis. And um, the idea was actually exactly this, to create you know, a modular, a cellular element that could expand to become you know, uh, a large organism. So it could be applied to off-grid residential units in the middle of nowhere, where people you know, can just uh, be at the lake and contemplate um, the, the environment to um, you know, large scale developments in the urban context. And, um, you know, always in CLT, and these two projects actually brought us um, many clients over time, and actually we expanded also the, the scale of intervention within our, um, our studio. We are actually working on, uh, on the city designs currently, using the same approach, using mitosis as well as a um, parametric tool for designing because it automatically tells you, you know, the density and you can, you know, trigger some parameters and uh, automatically create a dense, more dense environment, high and, and, and so forth, using CLT or other bio-based uh, materials. So these are the, um, yeah, the, the main projects currently ongoing that are uh, exciting. Yeah, that sounds really great. Thank so you. lastly, what do you think will be the biggest challenge in harmonizing human and nature relationship in the future? That's a good one. Um, you know, Frank Zappa is an um, American composer, and he used to say, uh, without deviation from the norm, progress is not possible. And because in this case, we are actually talking about progress, I think the, um, the challenges we are facing are in the, um, the let's say, political structures, um, regulations, because, you know, using bio-based materials that are not, uh, you know, fully certified yet because they are too progressive, too innovative, it's, um, you know, it's very difficult to, to implement in a design. So that's why we are focusing at the moment, while still developing new materials, we are using a lot timber and CLT and XLAM for our construction, because it's actually uh, a material that is certified. But in certain countries, like Italy, for instance, it's still difficult to use wood because, you know, uh, I, I talk specifically about Italy because I, I know it I know it better. Uh, we are busy there now or as well. What you you have to face is um, a regulation that uh, can't accept more than a, a certain amount of floors because of uh, safety regulation. Of course, that's very important. We we have to provide security and safety for um, for the people inhabiting this building. But the law, uh, is not picking up uh, the progress that the, um, the industry is developing. So, um, and also on a governmental, um, let's say, a scale, this is also uh, a challenge. You know, 
we have to, I think we are living in a very interesting uh, time of our evolution where we are actually questioning a lot of systems that we are using, financial systems, uh, governmental system, political systems, and so on. We are in the, what they call the, the age of Aquarius. <laughs> so we are getting more, we are freeing ourselves up uh, from these constraints. And this is, uh, I think it's something that it just started. So something that will progress in the, um, very quickly also, I suppose, in the, in the coming years. But yeah, to, to finalize the, the, the answer to your question, I think the, um, the main challenges is into breaking cer certain structures that are not allowing us to de deviate from the norm and to progress. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we will slowly get there, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Um, well, we are all working on it. So, and I think the nice thing is that you know uh, everybody's contributing nowadays. It's not only governments imposing their ideas or their regulation. Like, uh, like we live in in the Netherlands. It's a very progressive country, where we see uh, human rights are are very yeah. It's it, it's very um, valuable here, and people they really have effect on the um, on the political environment, on the society. They really have an impact. It's it's a very interesting country, and um, we are we are all progressing into towards that direction. I know certain countries they have much more difficulties than the Netherlands. Obviously, I'm aware of that. But you know, the moment someone is pulling, you know, it's elevating the consciousness of uh, of the whole planet. Then um, all the other countries will adapt to that because that's what people want. Yeah, and with you know the kind of stuff, transparency and the demand for yeah. it uh, these days, it's only gonna get uh, we're only gonna get there faster. I hope. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, you're totally right. And um, yeah, I only I only hope that actually education uh, picks up because uh, that's where youth is formed. And uh, we we acknowledge that you know also funds for education in the last years they've been decreased in most of countries. And, you know, art, music, they're not part of uh, you know school education anymore in a lot of countries. And these are very important elements to keep you know to keep your mind free and uh, for for a young person and free to to explore and to to open um, to open up. I think education is also a very, very important aspect to, to cultivate in the, in the coming years and to support. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I'm, I'm really happy when I have to do this, when, I, when I'm asked to do these interviews, because uh, this is also very educational. So um, it's not, let's say, the standard as we discussed before, you know, the governmental education that comes from, uh, you know, the the, um, the national uh, public institutions, but it's something that everybody is um, is nurturing, let's say, these days. You know, discussing, sharing ideas, implementing, implementing them in design, in life, and, and everything is very important. I really appreciate your um, your invitation again. Yeah, and I too love how this discussion turned out. It's interesting that we got a chance to look at nature from different perspectives and different scales. You know, we talked about the universe and like to a really small scale and how everything is just one and connected to each other and appreciate also how you can display using inspiration or the elements from nature, like mitosis, you know, and collaboration to essentially create design that doesn't only minimize impact, right? Like you said, but it mm -hmm. uh, created a net positive impact. So we want to yes. regenerate to make, because all the damages that we've done in the past, we need to now do something to it, right? So yeah. yeah thank you so much, Giacomo, for today. Yeah, and thank you, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good luck with everything. <laughs>